This is episode 5 of the One Idea Podcast. Does FOMO marketing work on you? This podcast is produced by Evolve and Adapt, a certified management consulting and digital implementation firm based in Singapore and Malaysia. If you're looking for a professional team to position your brand and grow your business to the next level, speak to us at evolveadapt.com. Dear citizens, my name is JC Sum. I'm a certified marketing management consultant and the author of Evolve, Adapt or Collapse. About six years ago, I was in Shanghai, China. After my work commitments, I went to Yuyuan, or Garden of Happiness, a popular tourist spot in the city. This was probably my third time there. Each time I visit, there's always a long queue for the Nanjing Xiaolongbao store that is on the ground floor. For our non-Chinese listeners, Xiaolongbaos are small Chinese steamed buns traditionally prepared in a Xiaolong, which is a small bamboo steaming basket. Now, there are many, many different Xiaolongbao stores that are good all over Shanghai, but there's always a long queue that snakes throughout the complex for this particular store. Bear in mind, these customers are queuing for Xiaolongbaos that are served in paper trays, and customers must find a bench or corner to eat these dumplings. Most just stand around and eat them. I've seen people, mainly domestic tourists, join the queue even though they had no idea what they're queuing for. Now, I'm not the sort of person who will queue for food or most things. I think my time is way more valuable and should not be spent waiting in line. I also don't think that any food in general is worth such a wait, so I've never queued for these Xiaolongbaos. This time, as usual, I did not want to queue, but we headed to the front of the line to where the open kitchen was behind glass walls, just to have a look at the Xiaolongbao making process. However, here's the kicker. We discovered, while there was a long line for the takeaway orders, there was also a small entrance to a sit-down restaurant area that was on the third floor. We walked up and discovered that not only was there no queue to the restaurant, we could order straight away and have a comfortable seat for the meal. And just two floors below, dozens and dozens of people were queuing to eat dumplings from a paper tray. So why were people willing to queue up for more than an hour? More recently, in Singapore, Malaysia and other cities, long queues formed for the launch of the Swatch Omega collaboration, the Moonwatch. The collection comprises 11 models, selling at 372 Singapore dollars each and offers an entry point into owning an Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch, which has a price tag of at least $9,000. Swatch did not say that the collection would be limited or one-off, but queues formed as early as 5.30am on the launch day. The store opens at 10am. Things got chaotic and the police was called in to control the crowds. One man even reportedly taunted the officers to use your gun and shoot me. I'm very glad the guy specified use your gun, otherwise the police officers might have taken out their camera phones. I was contacted by The Straits Times to give my opinion on the launch campaign from the perspective of a marketing and branding consultant. Here's the quote from the news article. Mr. JC Sum, a strategy consultant at business consultancy firm Evolve and Adapt, notes that it offers customers the best of two well-loved brands. Even though the watch is not a limited edition, he adds, there's a strong social and psychological value to being the first to own a highly sought-after piece. In this way, the launch was successful in leveraging FOMO, the fear of missing out. The fear that the watch would be sold out quickly and may not be available for a long time. End quote. First, let us understand what is FOMO marketing. FOMO is the fear of missing out. Here's a great definition from saleslovesmarketing.co. The FOMO marketing strategy is a form of marketing in which you leverage the customer's time-sensitive desire and market to them in order to make a sale. The marketing message and advertising is structured in a very specific way, such that it triggers impulsive customers to make a purchase. The FOMO marketing strategy centers its marketing message around the following criteria below. Urgency specific time limit, social proof, and highlights the feeling of missed opportunity. It is meant to trigger people to take action quickly, 
or otherwise, they might miss the chance to capitalize on a massive opportunity or deal that is happening right in front of them. The reason why FOMO marketing works is because of customer perceived value. In my book, Evolve, Adapt or Collapse, I share four types of value that are relevant to business and marketing. These four types of value are functional value, monetary value, social value, and psychological value. Functional value is the value that a product does or service offers. It is the solution an offer provides to the customer. For example, if I buy a watch, it tells me the time. I'm happy as I'm now only 30 minutes late for meetings. Monetary or investment value is where the price paid is offset or increased at a later time. For example, you might buy a piece of property with the belief and hope that it will increase in price in future and you can sell it to make a capital gain. Social value is the extent to which owning a product or engaging a service allows the customer to connect with others or prosper at a social level. So a luxury watch that projects a certain social class is considered to have social value. Psychological value is also called identity value. It refers to the extent to which a product or service that allows customers to express themselves or feel better about themselves. For example, I buy a particular gadget or toy not because others buy it, but because it makes me happy. The fear of missing out or FOMO exists because of social and psychological value. You might want something because you're pressured by peers or what you see on social media, and this in turn influences your own identity or feelings towards a product, service, or brand. From a marketing standpoint, if you are a business owner or marketer, how can you use FOMO marketing to increase sales? I'm going to share with you four devious tactics in FOMO marketing meant to take advantage of how people perceive social and psychological value. FOMO marketing tactic number one, create scarcity by offering limited opportunities. This is probably the top FOMO marketing tactic used by marketers. The idea is to create the impression of only a limited number of opportunities that are available to be purchased. This could be really true. For example, there may be a fixed quantity of products available in the market due to production limitations, especially in the case of handmade products or maybe their physical limitations like the number of units in a new property. The limited supply could be semi-true. That is, manufacturers might deliberately limit the supply of the product in the marketplace so that there is an artificially low supply. This is the case in the traditional diamond market where De Beers controls a majority of the supply of rough diamonds. Finally, the limited supply could be completely false and the marketeer just wants to create the illusion that the supply is limited to engage in FOMO marketing. Regardless of the actual supply, you can create the impression of limited opportunities in different ways. Here are some ideas. Make only 100 opportunities available or in whatever limited number that makes sense to you. You could make only a certain number of opportunities available a month, a quarter, a year, or forever. If your product or service is not something that has an inherent limited supply, you can still create limited versions of the offering. For example, if you offer a service like hairstyling, accounting, or technical services, offer a free add-on service, combination of products, or a discount for the first 50 customers. If you have physical retail outlets, have an offer of product only available at one outlet to drive traffic to that outlet. You can then offer different products at different outlets at different times of the year. Another way to make the supply limited is to offer your product to an exclusive group of people. This could be a group of your most loyal customers or the highest spenders, or it could be exclusively for a certain demographic, such as university students. This episode is sponsored by eFunnily, a marketing platform and source for digital marketing tools, information, and digital solution providers in Southeast Asia. eFunnily helps business owners and marketers use different digital marketing tools to funnel customers to their online assets. It also features a Southeast Asia digital marketing directory that will help you find the ideal digital solution provider that fits your marketing or technical needs. 
Visit efunnily.com for more info. That is e f u n n e l y dot com. Now back to the show. Formal marketing tactic number two: Show that the offer will not last by creating a time limit. A time limit is probably the best way to create a sense of urgency to encourage customers to act immediately. For e-commerce platforms, this is very common during sales events. You might even see countdown timers to ensure you act quickly. In this part of the world, we're very familiar with the 11/11 or Singles Day sale. Singles Day was created in China in 1993 as an antidote to Valentine's Day. Alibaba then used it as a sales event for its e-commerce platforms, and this has spread throughout Asia, especially in Southeast Asia. Since then, there have also been other events such as 1212 and 99. In the past, some physical stores conducted a daily flash sale that lasts a short duration and can happen at any time of the day. This was probably inspired by Kmart, who back in 1965 debuted the blue light special, as flashing blue sirens in the center of Kmart stores would go off to direct shoppers to a discount item. While time limits are very popular for direct-to-consumer businesses, putting a time limit for an offer can also work for B2B businesses. For example, you could have different offers for different products or services for different months or quarters, depending on your sales cycle. Here are some examples of offers that might work for you. You can bundle products and services together at discounted prices. Offer an after-sales service. Or training session free with a particular product or service, offer free warranty or an extended warranty on a particular product, or offer customers the chance to qualify for a lucky draw, webinar, or networking event if they make an order before a certain cutoff date. Formal marketing tactic number three: show that something is in demand. The idea is to show that a particular product or service is in demand and that customers are actually buying them. For physical stores, one of the best ways to show demand is the long queues formed outside of the stores, such as the case with the Xiaolongbao at Yuyuan in Shanghai I mentioned earlier. There are also notable local examples in both Singapore and Malaysia from the past, including Hello Kitty Toys at McDonald's, Bubble Tea when they first opened up, Roti Boy, which is a fried coffee bun, and the Pork Floss Buns from Bread Talk when they first came out. These seem to be all food examples, but I'm sure you can think of others. For online businesses and web stores, there are several ways to show that your product is in demand. One tactic is to show the volume of stock remaining or show a low stock level to encourage FOMO. You can also update social media and send out emails to customers to warn them that stock is running out. This will usually get people who are sitting on the fence to act quickly. Another tactic is to highlight social proof in your website or web store. Social proof in formal marketing is a way of using the experience of other people to showcase a product or service. This serves as further validation or proof of a product or service. Humans are social creatures, and we tend to make purchasing decisions based on the reviews and experiences of others. If a certain product has a long list of reviews, five-star ratings, and great customer feedback, people are more likely to buy. For more marketing tactic number four, use an exit pop-up for your website. Now, this is a very specific type of digital marketing tactic, but it is very devious and has proved to increase sales conversions. This tactic is specifically for business websites, and it can work for both B two C or B two B businesses. So, what is the exit intent pop-up? First, let's talk about a pop-up message in the context of a website. I'm sure you've experienced pop-up messages countless times when you visit websites. Often, when you're on a site, a message pops up to cover the content on screen. The message will usually be a request to sign up for a newsletter, discount code, or free gift, such as a download. More often than not, there's actually value in the offer. But most people ignore the pop-up and close it. This is because the timing of the pop-up is wrong. Most sites program the pop-up to come on almost immediately before there's even time to consume the content. 
This is irritating because most people want to consume the content and see if the content has value before they decide to sign up for something or even bother to read a pop-up message. It is much better to program the pop-up so that it appears at least 20 to 30 seconds after the user is on the web page or after they scroll to a certain point in the page such as three quarters way down. Or better yet, you can use the exit intent pop-up. That means the pop-up only appears when the user wants to close the tab or hit the back button to exit the website. The message in the exit intent pop-up will then have an irresistible offer that is designed to trigger the FOMO in people. This pop-up message could include a one-time 50% offer that will last only for 30 minutes and all the user has to do is to sign up for a super duper exclusive promo code. Or the pop-up message could remind the user that there are only X limited number of opportunities left and if they leave, they may miss out on the offer forever. Or the pop-up could remind the user that over 1,000 people have signed up for the free trial and if the user signs up now, they'll receive a free gift worth $100 but is only limited to the first 10 signups. As you can imagine, such messages and offers can be very powerful psychologically and entice people to take action even though they're going to leave the website. So there you have it, four powerful formal marketing tactics that you can apply to your business, product or service. One element that I would be remiss if I do not touch on is the element of luck. For every successful formal marketing campaign, there are hundreds if not thousands of unsuccessful ones. Luck can play a big part on whether the campaign goes viral or does very well. Sometimes you can't predict if your audience will react favorably to your campaign. I think even Swatch did not anticipate such an overwhelming response to their Omega collab watch. They definitely did not want the police called in which generated negative press both online and in traditional media. What we have discussed so far is from a business owner's or marketer's point of view. What about as a consumer? How can you prevent yourself from falling for formal marketing? The first thing you can do is to re-listen to the tips I just shared for business owners and marketers. Now you know what formal marketing tactics they may employ to entice you to buy something. You can then be more discerning and assess if you are being psychologically pressured to buy something. These tactics are particularly common for online businesses and offline businesses like beauty services such as hairdressers, nail salons or spas. Another thing you can do as a consumer is to be very clear of the things that you actually want in life. Do you really need that watch, Hello Kitty doll or special recipe bubble tea? In the book Wanting, The Power of Mimetic Desire in Everyday Life, Luke Burgess summarizes Rene Girard's concept of mimetic desire. It is basically wanting things that other people around you want. But these wants may not actually relate to your personal happiness or true desires. That's why you often see people in the same social groups getting the same kind of watches, phones, cars, bags or property. It becomes a pattern because everyone is unconsciously trying to keep up with each other or fit into the group. These waves of wanting splash over all of us consistently and it's almost impossible to remain unaffected by it even if you know what to look out for. However, all these wants may be extrinsic thin desires. What you need to figure out is what are your intrinsic thick desires and separate them from your false extrinsic thin desires. So before you react to the next FOMO marketing campaign, ask yourself these questions. Why do you actually want to buy the item? Who is making you want the things you want? People on social media, superficial friends in a social group or influencers? Is the item in question a thin or thick desire? I hope this episode has shed some light on FOMO marketing and how you can use it if you're a business owner and how you can avoid falling for FOMO marketing if you are a consumer. So does FOMO marketing work on you? Let me know in the comments or wherever you are listening to this podcast. Finally, if you like a Hello Kitty themed limited edition cup of bubble tea, I have only three for sale and I'm willing to let them go at $9,999 each. But the offer only lasts for five days. Visit my website for details. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the One Idea Podcast. Catch every episode by subscribing to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or on your favorite podcast app. Just search for One Idea, O-N-E-E-Y-E-D-E-E-R. As you know, a podcast needs listeners' reviews to grow. So please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. This ensures we can keep this podcast free forever. Check the show notes for details. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, myself or our consulting firm, head over to oneideapodcast.com. My name is JC Sum and this has been One Idea.